Okay. <clears throat> uh, so first of all, a, a comment about the name of the group. Ordinarily, we would have been called the database group, a database research group, but that doesn't sound cool enough. Uh, we wouldn't, I wouldn't get a slot in this uh, evening to talk to you guys. I'm sure half of you actually started your career wanting to be database people, but you couldn't make it through your first database course because you fell asleep. Uh, the second problem with doing that would be that if I called, if we called the group the database group, uh, we would be in charge of three quarters of all of Google, and uh, life is stressful enough without that sort of thing. Because you know, there's big table, there's indexing, uh, database. We have a lot of databases in Google. So what we actually do uh, in this team is we look at the structured data that is on the web. Okay, and what I'm going to do in this very, very quick talk is show you that there's a lot of structured data that exists on the web and that you want to do very uh, cool stuff with it. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay, so like uh, Peter said, uh, or following up on Peter's comment, unlike previous decades, now is the age of uh, structured data and we can do structured data better than ever before. So um, I want to say one other word is, uh, we're sort of a combination of AI databases, okay? So this, the, the kind of techniques that we need to uh, employ in order to solve the problems we're trying to solve are actually a combination of both of these uh, fields and, and, and we love that, okay? So let me give you a few examples of the kinds of structured data uh, that exist on the web and that you, can't, uh, that you can leverage in search. So for example, if you did a, a search uh, for birth date of Barack Obama, you could actually find that, uh, that he was born, you know, he, had, he just had a birthday. And the way you can do that is you can find a lot of sentences on the web that actually mention uh, uh, that, uh, that fact, okay? And looking at how often they appear and whether they appear in the top results that Google produces for that query, you can actually highlight the fact that you, you can come to, to a conclusion that this is actually a pretty good result to highlight um, in your search results. So this is the structured data that is extracted from text, okay? So that's one example. A second example is you have uh, you have a lot of data sitting there on the web in tables. So last time I counted, and believe me, I did count. I count every day. Uh, if you look at the number of tables that exist on the web just in HTML form, high quality, what you would call relational tables, you have about I would say 200 million of them, and that's only in English. Okay, that's about five orders of magnitude more than any database system has ever had to deal with in terms of the number of tables that, uh, that you have. This is not a particularly interesting table, but it's just an example of a table, and there are you know, a lot of them like that. Uh, when the web started, everybody started talking about the deep web, so we have uh, you know, a lot of for uh, forms that are actually hiding uh, a lot of really good structured data behind them, so that's another source of a lot of structured data. I would estimate something on the order of 20, 30 million really, really good forms with high quality uh, content. And the deep web presents its own uh, challenges. Um, we have an effort called Google Public Data where we actually get public data from a variety of government organizations and uh, we, we uh, annotate the hell out of it, we choose it, we, we, we clean it, we do all kinds of things. And we produce uh, visualizations that are very easy to, uh, to use by anyone. This is probably the only place on the web where you can find a reason to move from California to New Jersey. The unemployment <laughs> in New Jersey is lower, with apologies for, to people from that part of the world. Um, they, they have less unemployment, we have more unemployment here, okay? Um, this is an example of, uh, of a product called Google Fusion Tables that uh, comes out of my team, where we make it, we make databases sexy, okay? So we make it very easy for people to take their data put it into the cloud, uh, manage it, create visu beautiful visualizations, and publish them uh, anywhere you want, okay? And, and the key point is, you don't have to be a database geek or know any database geeks uh, in order, or, or pay any database geeks in order to do this. We're trying to make it very easy so anybody ha who has an interest in their own data can do this. So this is uh, the Wall Street <laughs> Journal that took uh, the user system to uh, make a nice visualization of uh, the latest census data. Okay, in fact, the Guardian from the UK, the Guardian, the newspaper, just won a, a, an honorable mention for an award for innovation in journalism for using uh, fusion tables. So, uh, that's kind of cool. If you had any doubt about the importance of uh, structured data on the web, uh, so this is about, uh, data provided by the government of Australia. This shows you all the public toilets in Australia. <laughs> 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 so you may want to 
want to, you know, ask queries about this thing. Is it the funny thing? a lot in Tasmania. There's also a lot in Tasmania. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, when I put this up, I was actually I prepared this for a talk that I gave in Australia, and all of a sudden the, the, the audience, just like you, burst up in, in, in laughter for a much longer time. And I, you know, I sort of felt like I'm not part of this party. And when I finally asked them what the heck is going on here, apparently, you see this down here, this is, this is Tasmania. And so apparently this visualization confirms all the stereotypes that Australians have about Tasmania. <laughs> the picture can be worth a thousand words in this case. Okay, so, we have, so we have all of this data on the web, okay? And so what do you want to do with it? Okay, what I'm planning is, the main thesis underlying this, our team is that we're not doing a very good job at creating this ecosystem around structured data on the web. So the first thing you want to do is you want to discover it. You want to be able to say, you know, public toilets in Australia, you want this thing to come up, right? Uh, so we're not very good at, at discovering structured data uh, on the web when it's actually relevant to our queries. We also want to, when we get that data, even if it's sitting on a web page, that's not good enough. We want to actually manage it. We want to filter. We want to uh, do all kinds of things with it and create visualizations. You want to visualize it. You want to enhance it. You want to ask maybe harder queries like give me public toilets in Australia that are close to be the pubs or something. I don't know, you know something useful like that. Uh, if I if you have a, a, a piece of structured data that is useful to you, you may want to find related data. I'll give you an example of this in a moment. And obviously, the dream is to integrate data from multiple sources because that's when data really comes uh, alive and gets really cool. So I am a coffee nut, uh, professed coffee nut. So I have a data set say on. This is where coffee is being produced in the world. You can see it's a pretty clear pattern. Now I want to find somebody else who knows about where coffee is being consumed in the world. And you realize that a bunch of Scandinavians are drinking all the coffee that um, is being produced in, in Brazil. Okay? So the ability to actually find related data sets is, uh, is a tool that will enable people to actually get more value out of their data, come to more interesting conclusions, uh, all that great stuff. This is an example that was uh, created by somebody, again, using fusion tables uh, just after the Japan earthquake. What they did, uh, this guy took the data about all the earthquakes in the world since 1973 and put it on a map. So red is where you have a lot of earthquakes, okay? Uh, not a good place. And the purple points are where all the nuclear reactors in the world are, okay? So this was like after the, the, the meltdown of the nuclear reactors in Japan, and this this is the you know, best example I know of the power of data integration. You want to know uh, where to buy your next house. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you can start putting data together like that, find it on the web, put it together, then you're starting to create an ecosystem around, uh, around structured data. Yeah. So what are the challenges here? The problem is that there are all these there are hundreds of millions of great data, great data sets, but none of these people stay awake during their database courses. Okay? Like some of them didn't even try to go there. So there's no schema, there's no integrity constraints, there's nothing that you know database, database people take for granted uh, in their world. We don't even know what the data is about. The data is embedded in, in textual pages where the description of what the relationship represented by the table might be somewhere in, in text. It is in text, but nobody tells you uh, where it is. And the most important thing about this data, which is very different than what database people do, is data is about everything. Okay, in a, data, a traditional database, I decide that I'm gonna create a database about you know, a company and its employees, right? So I know pretty much what I'm going to be talking about. But in the, on the web, data is about everything, and nobody tells you what it's about, and, and so you can't create a schema. The notion of schema that is so central to our existence is, has to be thrown out the window, okay? Uh, if you open the window here, I would, I would do that for you. Okay, so let me just show you one uh, really nifty trick that we do uh, to try to address this problem, or some of these problems. So here's a table, okay? And I looked at these things, and I had no idea what these things are, okay? I'm, I'm not a biologist, okay? And so when, when, when a search engine looks at this, it also doesn't know what these things are, which makes it harder for it to retrieve this table for uh, relevant queries. However, you can look, you can use things like Hearst patterns and try to find where, uh, you know, uh, green ash appears on the web. And you will find, and I'll give you only two out of a million of examples, that uh, you know, green ash is actually mentioned in sentences that talk about species and talk about North American species. So if you find enough occurrence of, occurrences of these in text on the web, <coughs> you can now start and you start seeing that all of these values, or a large majority of these values, are actually mentioned as North American species. And now all of a sudden you can add another very valuable semantic inf uh, information to this table that this is talking about North American species. 
Okay? So again, here what we're doing is we're using the multitude of text on the web to mine information that enhances our understanding of the tabular uh, data on the web. So this is uh, um, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm done. And the next, do you, there are a bunch of references here if you want, and I think some of this will be available to everybody.